Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. I'm glad you're here. So today we're gonna have a look at another Septandi special. It's currently the month of September and during that month, content creators, old and new, get together to create Septandi videos. So that's what today's focus is going to be. My second Septandi 2021 video. Today we're gonna look at this Tandy 1000 HX in much depth. We're going to look at the hardware, the base components of the system. From there, we're gonna have a look at some of the peripherals, as well as some modern add-ons that you can add to this machine. We'll also look at expansion, and also go ahead and power on the system and look at some programs. From there, I'm going to show you the Setup HX utility that you can use to program your Tandy 1000 HX. And we'll go ahead and take things to that point, and we'll wrap things up. So. Without further ado, let's get to it. So here we have a fairly common setup for the 1000HX and EX. You can see that the way I have this set up here is that we do have the monitor on top of the base and nothing in between. This is not what I consider to be an ideal setup. We're best off having something in between. So I bought on Newegg this little shelf that you see here, nice black color. It's the Roswell Home branding as is typical for the new egg products we can go ahead and rotate this and then take the monitor and put it on top of the hx however we're going to see something here you have the monitor right on top let's go ahead and see what happens if we take it and move it around and you can see that it slides quite a bit and that's not good so what we need to do is come up with a better solution and i found something this was actually a suggestion of one of my subscribers and what i have done here is to go and cut this cabinet lining material that you see here and we can take that and put that right on top and then from there we can take the monitor and put it on top so let me get this nice and aligned here here you can see it nicely lined on top cut to fit now let's put the monitor on top and let's give it a little shake and you see the whole table shakes now so from that standpoint there's no problem we're all set so this monitor is a cm11 by tandy of course it is an rgb monitor very nice compatible with the cga standard we have a variety of adjustments. We can adjust the brightness, we can adjust the contrast, as well as the horizontal positioning and vertical positioning, though that's a little bit dirty. We probably need to clean that out, as well as horizontal hold as well. So we've got all these different options here. You can see each one of the different options along the bottom, which works out really nice to give you some nice adjustments on this otherwise analog adjustable monitor and a power switch. There you have it. Here's a side view of the monitor you can see, nice and deep. And here you can see the back where it is labeled CM11 and it was manufactured in January of 1990. And here we have the power and signal inputs for the monitor. Here you can see that signal input, the nice nine pin D shell. Looking at the computer base, we do have this three and a half inch floppy drive and there's also a place for expansion for adding a second drive if so desired. This beautiful keyboard that you see here, absolutely love Tandy 1000 keyboards. And here we have the expansion slot, and I'll go ahead and remove the cover as you see here. And actually somebody is working to 3D print these types of covers. We'll look more at the expansion here in a few minutes, but this is a nice little cover, keeps things nice and neat, and it's real easy to remove and put back in place as you see. First up on the peripherals list, we have this external five and a quarter inch floppy drive. And here you can see it with a nice printed label and serial number and the warning about no user servable parts inside. We'll see about that here in a little bit. <laughs> More to come. But this drive is massive. Look how long it is. On the back you have an edge connector that would be used to connect to the computer. And I have long lost the cable for this system or it actually didn't come with one. So I ordered this cable from Cybernatic Systems. It has two connectors on it. Both edge connectors, one for the back of the drive and one for the back of the computer. And it works just perfectly. Here you can see the side of the drive, and once again, it is pretty massive. And once again, there's the front of the drive. So let's go ahead and put that in place, and we are indeed good to go. Next up, we have this Radio Shack branded mouse with a nine pin serial connector. And we can flip it over here and see that nice label on there, as well as the fact that it is a ball mouse, so you have that as well. Now this particular mouse is certainly not a Tandy 1000 mouse, but it fits nicely with the system. So I absolutely love it, and I love that Radio Shack branding you see. Let's get that in place, all set to go. Beautiful little mouse, nice for the setup. Next, I needed a way to get online, and the easiest way to get online was with a wired network. 
but I went ahead and decided to use one of these Google Wi-Fi points along with this Zircom pocket adapter so that I can get the system online. So we can go ahead and connect that in to the back there and put that on top and we should be good to go. Next up we have a Tandy joystick which unfortunately doesn't work so we won't be covering it today but there it is, good to go. There are a series of modern add-ons. Here is a Tandy 1000HX internal floppy drive adapter by Derek Osborne of Cybernetic Systems. The point being that you could use this to use a standard floppy drive and get power and data and signal from a drive and adapt it to use the Tandy 1000HX format. You do have to be a little bit careful when using these to make sure that the pinout is correct, so it's always worth checking things with a multimeter. I've heard that that's something that you need to watch for when you use these adapters. So there's that. I also have a GoTech connector from Cybernetic Systems by Derek Osborne. And this is a nice little device, though I haven't tried it. I do have a GoTech, I just haven't had a need because I use networking for most things. But you've got your different inputs on either side for the floppy drive, so that's good there. More directions on the Cybernetic Systems Tindy page on how to use this. I actually haven't looked into it, but it looks like a nice piece of tech if you want to connect a GoTech to your Tandy 1000 HX. Next up, we have the Smartwatch Plus by Cybernetic Systems. Battery goes here, your existing ROM chip goes here, and a clock chip is here. And if we flip this over, we can see that this will plug into your ROM socket. And basically, this rides on top, giving you Smartwatch Plus capabilities for your Tandy 1000 system. Pretty cool piece of tech. I absolutely love having this in the system. Next, we have a Tandy 3-in-1 card by Robert Kernicki. This particular card does have an RS-232 slot, as well as a compact flash slot, and a very nice mounting bracket. I absolutely love this card. I don't particularly use it in the system, but I have it ready to go on standby. And there you can see the branding by Robert. Looking at expansion on the back, you can see we have our cooling fan for the 1000HX, as well as a parallel card that I have put in, and two serial headers. And at the very bottom here, we have our plus card for memory expansion and DMA controller, the 1000EX memory expansion board, which also works in the HX. And if we look here, we also have a video input, as well as an expansion input for, say, a floppy drive and a printer input. Here's the serial number and badge for my 1000HX. In the expansion bay is a mini XT to CF card, a SIG IO card with parallel and serial, and the plus memory card. For this top card here, you can see it has a CF card in it. Let's go ahead and wiggle and pull that out so we can have a closer look at it. Once I get this out here, these plus adapters can be a little difficult to get out from time to time. And here you can see it, that XT to CF mini card and a plus adapter to adapt it to ISA. We can go ahead and pull this out and you will see that it's a standard 8-bit ISA card. Pretty cool. So from there, let's go ahead and put it back together and it'll be ready to put back in the system. We'll set that aside for just a minute and have a look at the I.O. card which is in the system. And this is essentially an 8-bit SIG I.O. card with parallel and serial headers. So let's go ahead and pop that out and have a closer look at it. And here we can see it. Let me go ahead and disconnect those serial headers there so we can have a closer look. And there it is, your standard card, if you will. This particular model works particularly well in the HX. And I do have my plus card adapter connected in as well. Absolutely love this. This does the job just perfectly. Next, we'll remove the nine pin serial headers. And they're pretty standard, as you can see here. I'll go ahead and point out some features. Here are the header connectors themselves. And I'm very proud of the bracket that I've put together that we'll look at here in just a minute. Notice I've taken a standard ISA bracket and flattened it out and drilled holes in it so that it works in the HX. It's not pretty, but it gets the job done and from the outside it looks good. And of course here is the memory expansion card with the two headers for connecting the other two plus cards. Here's the first one and here's the second one. All right, let's go ahead and get this removed. So two screws and we're out. We can wiggle this back and forth to get it to pop out here. Very nice looking card. Absolutely love the aesthetics of it, as you will see here momentarily. Look at that. You've got your plus headers once again, as well as up at the top there, we've got lots of memory expansion, as you can see here, and a nice VLSI chip for DMA and or other functions, and our two headers as well for the plus connections. Very nice card and a proper edge connector, unlike my other cards where I butchered them, but this works well. And finally, we do have that Smartwatch Plus in here. You can see it hiding in the back here. Just wanted to point that out as well. 
So next we'll put Robert Krenicki's card in the system. You can see how that gets situated nice. It's real easy to install, love it. And you can see that it's in the second slot and that the top slot is completely empty and the bottom slot is empty. So that is one thing about this card is it is going to go into that slot. So if you wanted to do other expansion, for example, if you wanted to add two serial ports like I did, you can't do it. And additionally, if you wanted to add, say, a parallel port, you also cannot do it. So that's just something to keep in mind. So here we are powering on memory size of 640K, as you can see here. The system's gonna go ahead and boot through the boot process. And we'll notice a couple of things as well that may be peculiar that you may not have seen in the past. First of all, that that XT CF menu is there, along with your standard Tandy splash screen for BIOS ROM. Let's go ahead and test out the floppy drive. So I'm gonna change to drive B here, and let's do a directory listing to see what we see. And this should be an empty disk. I didn't mean to type die by accident, but that may be a foreshadowing here. Let's copy a file to drive B, just for fun, to see that we can copy files and see how this goes. And let's see, oh boy. So what I did is took the drive out, took two screws out from the bottom of the enclosure, and we can flip this over and slide this enclosure all the way out, this nice long enclosure that you see here. From there, there are two screws on either side that we can take out that will get us to the metal shielding that is above the drive so that we can pop that out and get access to the drive. So here we are on the other side, taking the screws out. And then from there, I can slide the drive out. If I were a little smarter, I would have popped the metal enclosure first, but I digress. Okay, so with the drive out, I've taken a Q-tip with some alcohol and given this a nice clean, put the drive back on the machine, let's try again. So disc back in the drive, let's see if we can go to drive B and do a directory listing. Indeed, that works. Let's try to format drive B and see what happens. And what's the verdict? Here we go, saving unformat information and the drive is working. So it just needed a little cleaning. That can happen from time to time. We'll call that good. Let's go ahead and explore drive A as well. And we do have a floppy disk in there and we can see there are some files and that works well. So that's pretty cool as well. I can type out autoexec bat and we can see the contents of my autoexec bat on drive A. Let's go ahead and make this B drive bootable. So I'll go ahead and copy MS-DOS over to it using sysb. And from there, let's go ahead and reboot the machine. And on startup, I'm gonna hit the B key to choose floppy disk drive B as my boot device. And now we can see it's booting from drive B. And fortunately, it is successful. So I'm gonna say that reading and writing on this drive is now fixed. This wasn't planned to be a repair video, but we did some repair in it, perfect. Let's go ahead and load up some programs. And the first one I thought I would load is to try and do a ping to my website, uh, which is lenderman.com, or at least one of them. And you can see here that doing ping seems to work well using Michael Brutman's MTCP. Absolutely love having a TCP stack on this system. Very cool. We can also do FTP if we want. And no, I won't be logging in, but you can see that it does resolve to an IP address and we could put in a username and password if so desired but we'll at least show that we can do that. Also very, very cool. Let's launch Deskmate. And I thought what I would do for you is actually play one of the songs so you can experience that lovely Tandy sound. I'll also load up Monopoly so that we can see that play and listen to the nice sound effects and view the nice Tandy graphics for this particular game. And finally, indulge me for just a minute here as we enjoy the beautiful Tandy sounding graphics of the HX playing OutRun for DOS Tandy version. And finally, I thought I would launch Notepad under Windows 3.0 just to see what that looks like. And as we have seen in my previous Septandy video, 
Windows 3.0 is probably not the best candidate for the system, but nonetheless it does work and we can load programs like Notepad. Next, I wanted to take a few minutes and talk about the Setup HX program, which is a program that you can use to configure EEPROM settings for your 1000HX. In the first configuration here, I have set things up so that I have added a new floppy drive to the system and we are going to run Setup HX. And what we're going to see is that the program will automatically detect that new floppy drive, which is pretty cool actually and pretty revolutionary for the time. From there, we can adjust other settings such as startup devices or startup programs, and I'm going to change it to be the menu so that we can boot up to the in-ROM menu on the 1000HX. There are a variety of other settings you can change. On reboot, you can now see that we have loaded the menu and we can try and run personal deskmate, for example, but it does require it to be on a disk. I can also choose startup from internal drive, which will mean it will now start up from the XTCF card, which is really nice. I don't have to make any ROM changes to enable that. Cool. So once this gets started up here, I'm gonna go ahead and launch Setup HX again, and we're gonna change the initial startup program to BMS DOS and restart. And now you will see that the machine automatically starts up using the in-ROM MS DOS. Pretty cool. We can do a directory and see the very few files there, but if we execute the P command, and we can see the version, but if we execute the P command, it will load that nice little menu that we saw. So that's kind of cool. Not sure why they call it P, but that's what they chose it. So I'm gonna choose startup from internal drive once more so that we can get back to the XTCF and we can choose another option like Deskmate as the initial startup program. However, Deskmate needs to be on a floppy disk for this to work and it's not found on drive A so it does fail. So Deskmate does not appear to be built into the 1000HX ROM, worth noting. But we can go ahead and put a Deskmate disk into the drive, change our drive A here in PCEM, put that disk in, and then if we choose Run Personal Deskmate, you will see that it will load up. So as long as you have the Deskmate disk in the drive, you can run this in this manner, which is cool. It still prevents the need to have a startup disk, so from that perspective, it is helpful. And finally, I'm going to make the startup device disk, and we can see that we end up booting from the XTCF card once more. Okay, that's what I had for you today. Hope you enjoyed it. Definitely be sure to check out other videos on YouTube tagged with Septandy or Septandy 2021. Other content creators out there making September videos for Tandy. Definitely subscribe to my channel if you liked what you saw today and you're not subscribed. We'd love to have you. Ring that notification bell. You'll be notified when new content is available. If you liked what you saw today, please give me a thumbs up. If not, consider sending me a strong message by pressing that thumbs down button twice. In all cases, it's been great having you along for the retro journey today, and I look forward to seeing you next time. But until then, bye for now.